your host, Jay McNally. Good afternoon, folks. Thanks for joining us. We have what I think is going to be one of our best shows, certainly one of our more controversial shows, since we started airing all of this a year ago. Can you believe that, Darren? Darren Moore's in our show. He's been with us from the start. Is this is this our year anniversary? Today? I don't know if it's. I don't. Wouldn't say it's a year. In, this of, month. Yeah, this it was month. March. I don't know if it was the first or second. But congratulations! Yeah. A whole Jay. year. A One whole year, year of enlightening. Started out at six a.m. Yep. Yeah. Where we we were we were just waking up. You could hear that we were just waking up at the moment, <laughs> groggy every morning. And now we're on at noon. Carried yeah. out through the um, the football season. So congratulations, yep. Jay, on one great year. A oh, great broadcast year. excellent. Broadcast excellent. Yeah, yeah. Or we, at least we, broadcast bro- mediocrity <laughs> here. I mean, it's the best we can do. You know, no, no, no. We, we say broadcast excellence. Huge, raging controversy that's embroiled the nation since uh, January 20, and that is the infamous HHS mandate. Or as I call it, the BO mandate. <laughs> the BO mandate. Boy, that really stinks. Barack Obama mandate, which requires that all insurance providers provide contraceptive services at no cost. This is an outright assault against religious freedom in the United States. They are forcing, uh, in the case of Catholics, they are forcing Catholic organizations to fund activities that are doctrinally, uh, categorically opposed to their church Now, teaching. they'll say, oh, we're not forcing them to fund anything. And the end around to that is that they're saying the insurance has to be in place and the Catholic or charitable institution has to create insurance and pay for insurance premiums to cover people who get services that the church finds immoral. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, the bishops have resoundingly opposed this, and I think it's the first time. Tell me if I'm wrong, Chip. Chip, by the way, knows about all this kind of stuff. Uh, I think this is the first time in certainly my lifetime that all the bishops have signed, personally signed on, to a, a, a protest against a specific government action. Even, mm. even on something like abortion, when everybody issues their letters, there's, uh, there's never been this unified, total, uh, vocal assault. Is that right? There's a unified front amongst the bishops against this. Absolutely. Is that all, right? All 181 mm. bishops have written letters Is against that it. Is that right? Well, that's yeah. a good sign, yeah. because I always kind of thought they were like double agents, where they were kind of doing the bidding <laughs> of the socialist the oh, socialist they do. programmers, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, by, by, by trying to appear, however, that they're true to their faith, whereas if they're actually coming out, all of them, and yeah. saying, no, 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 we're totally against this. Then against the mandate. It sounds like it's, they maybe regretted uh, paving oh, yeah, the road yeah. for uh, Obamacare. But now it's spinning out very, very badly for mm. them. If I might so, point out one thing here, Jay, I think that one of the things that we need to look at, particularly those of us in the faith community, is that what has really happened here is not only is it an attack on freedom of religion, but r- really what's happened is that it has confined our freedom of religion to freedom of worship. Freedom and worship and freedom of religion are not the same thing. So now what Obamacare has basically done through this mandate has made has, has said that, okay, you have a right to worship as you want, but anything outside the church is, yeah. is you don't have the right to your religious your principles religion stops, outside of the church. Your religion, your religion stops at the church doors. Exactly. Isn't it amazing? I think it's a wonderful hypocrisy that that the, the liberals always say that they want to keep government out of our bedrooms, but yet yeah. they they demand that we yeah. pay for their contraceptions and abortions. Yeah, talk about hypocrisy. <laughs> so, obviously, Obama and his crew realize that they are in a tough spot because there's a almost universal opposition from this from most religious uh, leaders in the country, beginning with uh, the Catholic Church and and the more traditional evangelicals and all the rest of them. So they brought up a woman who will be a household name the rest of her life, Sandra Fluke, whose appearance was no fluke, by the way, who appeared at a non And there's very little sand going on in, in, in that fluke, I'll assure you. <laughs> <laughs> she's not letting the she's not letting the cobwebs grow. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh hey lady, God. it's a hey lady, it's a vagina, <laughs> not a clown car. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my, ooh, hey, my I, I'm she's blushing. the one that wanted to testify. She went before yeah. this House Democratic strategy session, which was not an intellectual debate given a panel of people taking different sides of an issue. Yeah. This was her and only her. A stage. This it was, was a all stage. Media. It was a kangaroo committee, for yeah. God's sakes. So now we find out that uh, the, the contradictions here are impossible in my mind, and this just points up to the awful state of Catholicism in, in the United States. This was Sandra Fluke, a Catholic, presumably Catholic. Well, I don't know if she's Catholic, but it, it representing a Catholic Jesuit school, 
who went there and said that uh, she favored the, the contraceptive mandate and all the rest of it. And she was presented as a 23-year-old who was moderately innocent. So now we find out somebody, and, and let's, let's point she this out. She was a handsome woman, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> so she we, wasn't 23. She's actually yeah, 30, right? She's actually 30. But this was not reported, as far as I can tell, by any of the quote-unquote mainstream media. I think it came out by a blogger. Sure. Am I wrong? Sure. I, I just saw it not even an hour what? ago. Are you I, expecting the truth from the, I am the mainstream sure some media? of her boyfriends are going to see dollar signs when they start you know, <laughs> finding out who she is and what she said and... Yeah, so she she went forward and gave this uh, this statement, uh, claiming that uh, they they need the the well, how to go that the, the students are going broke because they have to pay for the contraception. Of course, Rush Limbaugh said <laughs> said what the hell? Careful is here it? now, Jay. Yeah, Careful. And he used uh, words that that uh, we normally don't use on the American Dream talk show. A very inflammatory language against this woman, and now uh, she is going to go the way of Monica Lewinsky, forever attached, hmm. probably the rest of her life, hmm. with uh, that appearance and that commentary by Rush Limbaugh. Well, Jay, if I might, I, I think there's a couple issues here that are at play. One, one is the fact that, as we mentioned before, this is an, a total attack on the right to, uh, to practice religion as we please. But secondarily... It is a matter of, of whether or not everybody else ought to be paying for contraceptives yep. for the people that, uh, for women that for 30 years need them. I mean, you think about it, a woman really is only able to conceive for about 30 years of their life, and yet that we're, we're having everybody pay for contraceptives. But the third one, and I think is, the, is by far the most important, is this neo-Freudian philosophy that has permeated our culture, which which makes everybody uh, believe that there's no sexual morality anymore. That right. that uh, we that somehow we have uh, we're all now the bastard great stepchilds of Jean Jacques Rousseau, where the only thing that's important now is our native instincts. And you yep. know, Jay and I, you and I have talked a lot about the difference between the moral imagination and the degraded imagination. Are we as human beings going to just yeah. simply slide back to the savage animal state, or are yeah. we to uh, try to climb the ladder of love in a way? That allows us to reach that level just a little bit below angels. Absolutely, the the, the general decline of the of uh, standards is, is breathtaking. Uh, I recall when I was in 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 high school, which I ha hate to say how long that ago that was, <laughs> but but uh, we were I was at a seminary, of course, and the the priest was talking about how far far gone the the nation of Sweden was. He said. Did you know that in places like Sweden, people live together before they're married, and we couldn't we couldn't <laughs> imagine some such a thing. This would be in the nineteen uh, late nineteen sixties. Today, I I think the st statistics are that maybe sixty or seventy percent of people who are getting married are living together, and we possibly we, higher at Georgetown Law, <laughs> much higher, <laughs> and, sleep, <laughs> and sleeping with more than one, I think. So, well, and Jay, I think the thing that, that's that's being lost, and, and I grew up, you know, I was going to high school. Dr. Ruth Westheimer was on the airwaves. And oh, she I, was, oh, yeah, Dr. And she Ruth. was basically, I mean, the, her whole philosophy can be summed up by Sheryl Crow's song, if it makes you happy, it can't be bad. <laughs> Do whatever you want, be as bad as you want to be. And and what what ended up happening is we lost, and, and Roger Scruton, I, I, one of the columns that got a lot of play that I wrote was the 10 books that helped make us human in the imaginative conservative. One of those books was a book uh, written by Roger Scruton my favorite living author, who uh, wrote uh, Sexual Desire, a Moral Philosophy of the Erotic, of the Erotic. And what, what Scruton does is he, he and this is, this is something that I think everybody who, who hears this will recognize the truth in this and will understand that this is the first step that we must take in this postmodern world towards restoring sanity to, to uh, sexual morality. And that is that there is a difference between sexual desire and erotic love. Mm -hmm. What we're being taught today in today's dorm brothels, as Vegan Gorian calls it in his book, Rallying the Really Human Things, our colleges have become, uh, the, what is orthodox in our colleges is sexual experimentation. And so they serve up our, our, our female students uh, like pieces of meat. Like, oh, like, absolutely. And, 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 and so instead what has happened, to go back to the Rousseau point, is that we have taught postmodern man that the only thing that's important is gratifying the sexual the sexual desire, not about climbing the ladder of erotic love. And if we don't teach our children this, then they will become nothing more than a, than the savage little animals that we are seeing testifying in these yeah. in these uh, in these cases. We're going to we're going to continue this conversation with a particular emphasis in the Detroit area, 
at, after the uh, the break with David Tyson, who has a who has been on the front lines of trying to challenge this. this he's no extra, chicken, this Tyson. He's, he's no chicken, this Tyson. <laughs> he. Has, <laughs> that is very good. Well, <laughs> so David has been at the. Uh, at, I feel at, rather plucky today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just another one of Darren's foul jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot keep up with this these puns. <laughs> Just keep scratching along, Jay. You'll get there. <laughs> so David's going to be with us. He's been at the front lines trying to promote what is known as the uh, culture of life.